Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. We back y'all live from the Dan Legacy Internet Radio.com flagship show here on these airwaves. Heard every Monday night from 7 to 9. We always go past 9, but 7 to 9 is the scheduled time frame. We're definitely glad you stayed with us. It's time to get into some what the hell, y'all. We got a few what the hell segments that we're going to get into. And of course, Y'all know me, Marcus J. I am certainly, certainly unapologetically unafraid to talk about race and communications and all of that kind of stuff that we have in this country and the poor ways that we treat each other. Black versus white, white versus black, everybody versus everybody. Uh, If you know me, you know I'm about love and I'm about peace. And I always like to point out situations when we don't show love and peace uh, because it just, to me, it points out the ignorance. But only through discussion uh, and goodwill can we get past it. So first thing I want to get into in this segment of What the Hell is the folks in good old Hope Mills, North Carolina. Good old Hope Mills, North Carolina, those folks down there are upset about a 4th of July parade float that stirred up the uh, uh, the ire of a whole bunch of onlookers because it had an antique trailer flying a Confederate flag that was pulling a wagon loaded with watermelons and sporting a draped sign which read, quote, White History Month, hug white people. The spectacle, of course, made many revelers question who would issue such a permit to the man pulling the trailer. Donnie Spell, a farmer, was the man behind the tractor shenanigans. Spell was able to get a permit from the town without a problem. However, Hope Mills administrators told ABC 11 that Spell was duplicit, du- duplicitous uh, when he applied for the permit, stating that he'd only be pulling a tractor with a sign that read watermelons for sale at a nearby bank parking lot. North Carolina, I'm getting this story from news1.com. K Dub, I'm going to come to you on this one first. Uh, ABC One, they visited his home to try to get some answers as to why he felt compelled to pull such an outright racist prank at an event that is typically enjoyed by children. The reporter was met by an unnamed neighbor uh, who said the spells float was not done to be funny or vicious, uh, that his racist tactic was not a hit with onlookers uh, there at the parade, however. Um, What's your thoughts, man? I mean, do we have an issue with it? Is it, you know, we know that some, you know, brothers and sisters in this country have no issue with the Confederate flag. And I think if it was just the flag, we would be okay. But I think, uh, well, I don't want to get into what I think. I'll share what I think in a minute. What do you think, Kate Up? I think that, one, um, we and myself, not surprised, you know, uh, you know, for all of those that say that we're in a post-racial America or what have you, you know, I would tend to, I would want to hear their opinion on this. I'm not surprised, one, and two, you know what, man, and I, I keep going back to it. It's just like the whole N-word situation. Every week, every month, we're going to have another situation where something is just appalling, and nothing's going to be done about it. Nothing's going to be said. Somebody might have a little punk-ass march or something like that. And I mean, what do we? What, okay, for the people that's offended, I would be, I would be, I would want to ask the people that's offended. Which don't get me wrong, I am offended. But I mean, we we have these type of what the hell type of situations on basically a month to month basis, whether it be in Florida, whether it be in North Carolina, or whether it be in in wherever. You know, pick your pick your town, uh, USA. Um, I'm not surprised, uh, nor am I shocked. Uh, and I need that in my shock that, you know, uh, the, the, the city, I guess, being duped into allowing this to, what to ha- for this to happen or what have you. But again, I, I, I just say, you know, for all of those that are somewhat shocked, surprised or whatever like that, what are we going to do about it? And, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm including myself in that as well. What are we going to do about it? Tony? I do agree with K-Dub that, I mean, this is something that is going to continue to happen everywhere, every probably on a daily basis, weekly or monthly. However, I do feel like people know where they can get away with those type things. Like, I couldn't see them doing that, you know, in the south side of Richmond, Virginia, or in Highland Park or Church Hill, and, you know, getting down the street safely without being attacked by a mob of of angry people. So I think that people who do those things know that they're able to do it in their area, and they know that it will be without without any sort of uh, repercussions. Well, you know, I'm going to disagree because of the simple fact he's entitled to do what he wants to do. It's his public right. It's his public ability to express himself the way he wants to. 
he, we can't dictate what form he uses it in unless he clearly defines that or if you didn't have that in writing then how do you define how do you determine what he can and cannot do you're going to go to a school that's called the confederates okay you're half expected to see a confederate flag on your yearbook what are you going to do not get your yearbook as you graduate are you going to not go to social events because they're called the confederates are you going to try to find another school that could be 20 miles out the way I mean, really, you're going you're gonna to get it regardless. I mean, it is a part of our history. Do we have to like it? Do, no, I'm not going to say we. Do I have to like it? No. Do you have to like it? No. But it's going to be here. It's not going anywhere. It's not going to change overnight. It's not going to change tomorrow. It's not going to change next week. The fact is, as long as he has a constitutional right to do what he wants to do, express himself the way he wants to express himself, he's going to do it. And point blank. I, I, I would tend to agree with you. Um Carlton, I, I would I would tend to agree with you. It is his right. It's his is it's the right of the, the the Ku Klux Klan to form and have their meetings. They get their permits to be in public and do the things that they do. You know, it's the right you know of of any kind of uh, you know known incendiary group to form and 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 to promote their practices, whether they are you know inclusive or or racist in practice uh however it's in poor taste uh if if nothing more it's in poor it's in poor taste uh and i think when we live in a country in 2013 where we still have people who are here and want to show you by utilizing their right which I, again i agree is his right but you got people who still live in this country who like to utilize the public forums to show you that you are absolutely inferior to me and i'll never want you to forget that we also know that we live in a country that has many practices that are absolutely designed to continue with the brainwashing to continue with showing that there are some people in this country who feel that they are superior and they want you to know that you're inferior so if we take the attitude that it's their right and we can't get mad about it, uh, then I think that we're doing a disservice to our children because, you know, didn't we used to just one generation ago get water hoses sprayed on us just when we were going to register to vote? OK, so we got past counting how many bubbles are in a soap dish. You know, we actually get to vote, but then they want to make it so that it's so difficult for you to vote that you just say, forget it. I'm not going to do it like all of these types of. You know, James Esquire, you know, James Crow Esquire type of deals. They're not out in your face like Jim Crow used to be, you know. But when you see something that's so outwardly racist, you know, like a guy pulling uh, a, a, a Confederate flag on a tractor, you know, with a sign that says hug white people today on the 4th of July with also a sign that says White History Month. I don't want to turn a blind eye to that. Now, I also agree with Kate up. What are we going to do about it? You know, I think the fact that we're hearing about this article means that somebody did something about it. Somebody got involved. Someone said something to the local media, things of that sort. That's what you do about it. You publicize it. You make it known so that these people could potentially think twice about going out there and doing something. Now, will there be another? Potentially. Potentially. But I think you cannot be quiet about it. At minimum, you cannot be quiet about it. Ain't no how stepping with Marcus J. Keeping with the... Uh, somewhat questionable uh, antics of some of our white brothers and sisters. We got a beauty queen contestant on a television show that a lot of our listeners might actually watch. It's a TV show called Big Brother. Uh, this particular woman, uh, Gina Marie Zimmerman, uh, she had been here, Zimmerman. Carl's got a good chuckle. Yeah, I didn't even notice that Zimmerman. Gina Marie Zimmerman has recently gotten fired from her modeling agency after they learned that she had been saying some questionable things. Uh, what did she say? Well, apparently, uh, <laughs> she referred to welfare, welfare, as N-word insurance on the television show Big Brother. Uh, Kate Up, I'm gonna come again to you on this one first. N-word insurance uh, is synonymous with welfare, apparently. Uh, to this woman now I like to bring up situations like this not because I give a damn about Gina Marie Zimmerman I don't care about her for real I really don't I don't care about this the guy pulling the tractor in North Carolina I don't care about those two as individuals however 
I bring up these kinds of incidences because it speaks to the mentality and it speaks to the to the thought, like the whole Paula Dean thing. Yeah, I gave another case last week where someone said something incendiary as well. It ain't just Paula Dean. It ain't just that person. It ain't just this beauty queen from wherever the hell she's from. It's a mindset that these people have and they feel empowered in large part because of the fact, like Carlton Banks said, you know, it's their right one. And like Kate Dub said, what are we going to do about it? So a lot of them feel empowered because not a lot is done. But uh, uh, Kate Dub, when you hear about this kind of story, what do you think? If, uh, basically, uh, you can make it back to the pre- previous story or what have you. I'm not surprised. Um, and, and this just goes goes to show their ignorance, you know. Um, you know, why, uh, let's look at the situation that you just mentioned in North Carolina with the tractor, so on and so forth. You know, we have to have hug a white person day because I think that, you know, in the larger part, uh, you know, they're feeling as though that they're losing control of their so-called America. And in this particular situation right here, you have an individual that's making a, a, a stupid-ass comment, and whether she knows it or not, and this is fact, there's more white people on welfare than, than a minority. So, you know, that goes, to, that goes, that leads to, you know, her showing her particular ignorance. Um, again, not surprised. I guarantee probably, mark my words and we have it on tape. I guarantee a month from today we'll be talking about another situation that really, that parallels the whole Paula Dean situation, the situation with the tractor, and this ignorant chick right here making a comment with the N-word insurance. Guarantee it. Yeah, no, I agree with you, Tony. I, I agree with you. Tony. Um, I agree with you, Tony. I'm oh. transitioning because I'm going to ask her a question. Okay. Thank you very much. My bad. <laughs> Tony. I, I agree with you. I was you. about to say, man, I was like, dog, I know my voice, it didn't get lighter. And you I know. See, that's what threw me off. Anyway, fellas. I got you, Mark. Thank you, Tony. I appreciate it. My, my question to you is this, because K- K-Dub hit on a very good point with regards to what is fact. And I looked it up, you know, you know, as far as the people that are on welfare, you know, it is a slight percentage. I think it's like 0.7% more white people than black people and even less Latinos. So, so, so if anybody wants to tell you that, you know, Latinos, you know, don't work hard, don't go to work every single day and don't do the damn thing, they full of it because they haven't looked up the census numbers that I looked at. It is a fact that there are not just the number of white people, not just because obviously they outnumber everybody. The percentage of people on welfare, the percentage of white people that are on welfare, that percentage is higher than of black people and of Latinos. That's something that can be looked up. I looked up the U.S. Census. That's where you can go and find those numbers. Um, that being the first thing. The second thing is, again, I don't always bring up these stories because I want to talk about these individual stories. I like to bring them up because it speaks more so to the mindset of what people are thinking. And we live in a country where we think, and I shouldn't say we uh, in the sense of you, me, Carlton, uh, uh, Kata, but we as Americans, because that's what we're brainwashed to think, we're brainwashed to think that black people are lazy criminals who you know, utilize the welfare system, who do uh, all kinds of crazy things that get them in prison, which, by the way, a lot of them do, but there are a lot of reasons other than them being jackasses doing <laughs> bad things conversation for another day but the point i'm making is how can we in your opinion work towards doing something about that stereotype because it's always been there i remember watching claudine and them people cleaning up the house when the welfare lady came over i mean what the hell um i think it definitely has to start with our children in schools because there's the inequality of you know success you know you look at the history books and you look at you know, all these different classes that you take, whether it's economics or sociology, and there's not an equal representation of of different races. So you kind of automatically get this thing, well, you know, white people are rich. So I, as a black person, you know, we've had a really hard history and I'm expected to be on welfare and be poor. So, you know, most likely that's what's gonna happen to me. So I think it has to start with our children and education showing that representation that it doesn't really matter what color you what, what color you are where you're from you can be successful you can have certain things hearing stories like this always makes me think of the movie crash i don't know if y'all remember that that came out several years ago yes and as much as we like to think um most of us for the most part will, who will you know say well you know i'm not racist you know i i think that i give everybody a pretty fair shake sitting there watching that movie 
made me realize just how much of a racist I am because there were scenes in the movie where I was like oh my gosh I would have done that too like when Ludacris was walking past and she grabbed a purse I'm not gonna say that I haven't done that before so I think that just having that awareness you know you can't make everybody go see a movie but again I think in a form what's what's a form where we can get everybody there and expose them to the same information schools call them banks well the biggest thing is you only see the bad and unfortunately when the bad happens where does it happen in the black neighborhoods you see it every now and then in the white neighborhoods but they don't go out there and find the worst person they could possibly find to do the interview uh, you know like the, the brother who found the girls and helped save them Charles Ramsey yeah him um, you know he 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 said when a pretty white girl fell into a black man's arm they're like dude really you had to say it like that I mean dead wrong I mean he's he put it out there like a white man a white woman can't be with a black man that's that's the thing he kind of like put it at when it shouldn't have been like that at all he's just stuck in the mindset that says white people are better than us well but, don't you say I mean but doesn't that directly correlate to what Tony just said when you do find these situations where, I mean, you started off your, your statement by saying that these things only happen in black neighborhoods, which we know for a fact is not. You know, I'll give you Colorado, for example, where black people are only 4% of the population, but 100% of the death row population. You mean to tell me ain't nobody white in the whole state of Colorado did nothing bad enough to wind up on death row? I mean, really? I mean, so, you know, I don't think that we're being... Uh, I think that we would be doing ourselves a disservice if we didn't acknowledge the fact that the media is driven to make it appear that those of us of color are not going to be, you know, members of this, of this society doing things that we should be doing. Tony? I just wanted to say, too, you just brought up about the media. If you look at, you know, every everything today on TV is reality. Um, but it's the way the media presents it. So if you watch shows like, you know, Snapped and those type of shows where you have people, you know, middle, upper class, you know, white families and the husband's killing the wife, the wife killing the husband, you know, that's sensationalized and people can't wait to watch that. But then you look at the first 48 and the majority of the people on there are young black people. So it's all in how it's presented because those murders, those things are happening in every community. It's just the way that they're portrayed to us. I mean, I, I agree with that, Kata. When I when I when I hear, you know, someone say that, you know, it's only happening in our communities, it does kind of, you know, make me raise my eyebrow. Uh, as you sit back and kind of listen to us talk about the way that the media portrays certain things along the race line, what's your thoughts, man? Uh, it's absolutely true. You know, <clears throat> it, it, it the media only reports on things that are salacious things that are get that buzz because you know what uh, I'm sure and we all know that there's a whole bunch of Trayvon Martins that have gone on across the country we, we we have to dig and find the stories that you know we have we should be outraged about you know we're not I, I, we all know that this is going on in Chicago but you know as of late I, I, I want to say reported they, they're still you know having a lot of violence going on in Chicago in our home city of Jersey City New Jersey it's a lot of violence going on that's not being reported by the national media. You know, the national media does latch on to those particular stories that will generate interest and generate uh, interest from the viewers. But, you know, and, and what happens is that it forces us to look in a particular direction and not using our peripheral or understand that this is all going on all around us. But because we rely on this media and we have a 24-hour media that keeps banging us in the head with the same stuff, you look at this Trayvon Martin uh, case or what have you. There's a number of things, a number of questions that could be raised, but we have to, we're, we're going by what the media is telling us to think about. Um, so, kind of, kind of wrapping, summing it up. You know, we have to take our own. Um, again, we have to take our own community in our own hands. Um, but the sad and unfortunate thing is, is that even though we say, what are we going to do about it? We may ask that question, but how many times have we asked that question in all of these stories that we've heard all the way from, uh, you know, the situation that happened in years ago in Howard Beach to uh, Diallo 
to, you know, Rodney King to to this current situation going on with Trayvon Martin and the two cases that you talked about earlier. Even though we know that these things are going on and people have these perceptions of us, how much has really changed? No, I got you. Carlton Banks, let me ask you a question. Sure. Um, we've talked about this um, kind of concept before, uh, but I think this brings up an, uh, a perfect opportunity to kind of put this question, and I want the whole crew to kind of uh, kind of build on this one. When you see this girl, you know, say welfare is N-word insurance, this to me speaks to her being brainwashed to how things are in this country to assume that black people are the main people utilizing the welfare system, which we know is just not fact. Uh, but that's the way it's portrayed. And I think even those of us in our black community, I would venture to ask 10 black people who most uh, of this country is on welfare. And I would think most even black people would think that it's mostly us on it. Uh, so I set this up by, by, by talking about what perception is. Why is it that we black people we get more upset when somebody white does something to us than when somebody black does something to us and i know we talked briefly about this before but i want to lay it to the crew now and i want you to start it off and i'll say this we see pookie and craig and them doing what they do in chicago right here in richmond virginia and our hometown of jersey city new jersey camden new jersey memphis tennessee pick your city USA we doing terrible things to each other on a daily basis and all we get is a vigil a funeral and then we get you know we forget you know I, I would venture to say that there are many cases right now that are similar to Trayvon Martin or in some cases just as tragic where a black kid killed a black kid and the, and the trial for the black kid is going on right now but we don't know about it, but we know about George Zimmerman shooting Trayvon Martin. So my question to you is this. Why we care so much when it's somebody white doing it, but we seem to get quiet when it's somebody black versus someone black? Because people have accepted it. They don't care. Why should they? I mean, anything can happen. It does happen. I'm almost expecting it to happen that way. Why do I care? I mean, the whole point of progressing is to start caring. If you don't want to be a, if you want to be a baby mama of RVA, um, then hey, be a baby mama of RVA, you know. But at least try to promote your kids to do better. That's the whole thing. If your kid, if you're teaching your kids to do better, then you're going to get better. My biggest thing <coughs> growing up is I want my life to be my son's life to be better than mine's. Can I guarantee that? No but I'm gonna do my best to get him that. I don't want him to have to go through some of the struggles that I went to, but no parent, I would think once that, but again, if you didn't do it for me, why should I do it for you? It's the kind of mentality a lot of people have. Tony, same question. Why do we care so much more when it's someone white doing something against us versus someone black? And I'll add a wrinkle to it. Um, you know, when this whole Paula Dean thing came out, you had a lot of black folk that had issues. I mean, you had some that, you know, you know, you had some that supported her. Um, but for the most part, you know, black people got together and was like, oh, Paula Dean is the devil and we hate her for saying the N-word. You know, and these are the same black people who, if you pull up their Facebook wall, it's, it's just completely littered with that word. Why is it all right when we disrespect ourselves, but when somebody white disrespects us, we just kind of justify it in some sort of way? I think that a lot of times it's because we don't want to make it seem, we don't want them to be able to say, well, see, that's what we're talking about right there. So we try not to put the spotlight on what we know exists already in our own community. So we just kind of put, you know, push it off on them and say, oh my gosh, look what you're doing. So uh, that's what I think it is. If, if, we, if we point out, oh my gosh, our black men are killing each other, they're gonna say, see, that's what we were talking about. That's exactly what we're talking about right there. So right. for us, it, Kind of ignoring or put the veil over, putting the veil over it makes it okay. Right. And I, I don't, I don't agree with that. I mean, I think some people too kind of, you know, they use use other people doing it as a crutch. 
well, that is why our black men are killing each other because, you know, the white man hold them down or, or what have you. So I think it's just excuses. It's just essentially just excuses all the way around. Kate, I'm going to ask you the same question. You hear the question. What's your thoughts? Um, you know, it's kind of a rhetorical question because there's not really a particular answer to that. You know, um, we as a community, we definitely like to play the blame game, but when at the time it has come where the microscope is put on us, we don't like that. Perfect example is, you know, how many times has Bill Cosby basically raised the eye of a, l a number of individuals telling us that we need to do a lot better, and the first thing that you get is a lot of, you know, uh, uh, pushback from individuals, you know, who is Bill Cosby and who is he to be saying X, Y, Z. A lot of times us as a community, we don't like to have that mirror put in our face and shown like, hey, you need to hold yourself to a higher standard. Um, I think that with the progress that we have made as a, uh, uh, as a community, it, it has allowed us to kind of not, uh, not continue we've gotten lazy i guess for for less of a better word we've gotten lazy where we don't have that same push that same fight that we did back in the 60s 70s and the early 80s now we're able to be on tv acting the damn fool we're able to you know get a lot of recognition for smacking the hell out of somebody you know and putting it on world star what have you you know we don't hold ourselves to a higher standard so you know to say why is it that we don't get upset about these things I, I don't know if there's a concrete set answer I, I really don't think that there's a concrete set answer for that we just have to do it as individuals and, and something that was said earlier was that you know if we're upset about that then we have to make sure that we we set the standard for our our kids and the generations uh, that are coming after us to hopefully see if they can also make that change and, and distill some of that information to the youth and to the generations after us. I think I'm about to take some heat for what I'm about to say, but this is just real talk and this is what I feel. I think a lot of black people still walk around with a natural inherent fear of white people, straight up. I think a lot of black people walk around scared of what white people think scared of what white people can do to them uh, and, and, and all of this kind of stuff, which is the reason why they or we will hold them to a different kind of standard than we would have our own. For example, look at your household, the natural household setup. The people in authority may potentially get away with a little bit more than the people that's on your level. Your siblings could punch you in the face and beat you up and do all kinds of stuff to you and you might fight them back or whatever but you ain't really gonna you know you know you you, you know you 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 well let me rephrase your, your siblings you you'll try to tear them up but the people in authority mom and dad or grandma you know you'll just kind of roll your eyes and keep it moving you know so using that analogy we the siblings the black people you know we'll we'll go after our you know our own we'll tear ourselves up you know, but the white people, the parents, the people in authority, you know, those people get a pass. And I think that that's something that's genera generationally passed down. I think that's something that's reinforced by some of the images that we see. No one is absolving our own from doing, you know, the things that we do. I mean, we know that, you know, just because your situation is dire doesn't mean that you go knock somebody over the head and take something from them. However, we also have to acknowledge that the system is not set up for us to be successful. You know, so we need to keep that in mind, especially when we see things in the media that only showcase the negative. And I think that's real talk, man. I think that a lot of us do walk around afraid, afraid of white people, you know, which is the reason why you could be having a, a, a conversation with the homies and you see somebody walk, white walk by. But if you're talking about white people, you start whispering. What you whispering for? If you're going to talk about white people, then talk about white people. I mean, I would guess that if they're going to talk about us, they're going to talk about us. <laughs> you know, especially when we when we not around. I guess I guess we wouldn't know if they not if we not around. But 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 seriously, y'all, I think that's a big part of it. And I think that we need to get to a point where we ain't afraid of nobody. We ain't afraid of our own and we ain't afraid of people who don't look like us you know a, a talk show host that i really respect made the point he talked about how a lot of us 
you know, are, you know, religious people who believe in the power of the Lord uh, and, 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 and all of that kind of stuff. Well, if you believe in the power of the Lord, this is what he says. I, I'll give I'll give Warren Ballantyne credit for this. This isn't me, but I agree with this. You know, if you believe in the power of the Lord and you believe in, you know, Jesus being sent here, you know, to, to help us and, and, and all of that. And you believe in heaven and hell, then what you scared of? For real, what you scared of? Why, you know, why, why are you scared? I mean, I know I understand the whole being prudent thing. You don't want to do something stupid to get yourself hurt. But I mean, if you really believe like that, then what you scared of? You know what I'm saying? So I don't understand it, but I know that it's there and it is what it is. Ain't much we can do unless we do. We can't just sit here and talk about it. We got to do. The only thing is, y'all need to tell people to listen to Ain't No Half Step or Marcus J. Live from the Den, Legacy in their radio.com every Monday from 7 to 9, where I talk like this. I try to empower the people that's close to me and the people that are listening to us every single week uh, and, and, and try to shed a little bit light on what I think. I ain't got all the answers, but I certainly have my own thoughts, and hopefully, uh, hopefully people who are listening to us can agree on some things. I'm getting a hit on the Facebook page. We got the number one fan of LegacyInternetRadio.com. S.Y. Butler is hitting us up on the fan page. She's talking about the way we fight each other is the same way. Well, I, I lost a little bit of your comment. Give me a minute. On the other side, I'll pull it up and I'll read it. We're getting ready to take our first break of the night. I promise I'll read your comment in its entirety on the other side. My computer just went down on me for a second. We're going to take our last break of the night. We're saying goodbye to your main man, K-Dub. K-Dub, you want any final words before we let you get on out of here, man? Nah, man. Peace and blessings to everybody, man. Stay safe out there. Boy, that's a man of very, very few words. Actually, I did get S.Y. Butler's comment back up. Uh, she's agreeing with me. Some are still walking around afraid, fearing of the consequences that may come from a white person. The same way we fight each other is the same way you should fight them. It's her comment. And I agree with her because she's agreeing with me. We're on the same page. Marcus J. Ain't no half stepping. We got my man K. Dub who's leaving us. We got Carlton Banks and Miss Tony still with us, taking a break. When we come back, Carlton Banks is going to ask the question What do you think about it? Two questions he's asking. And that is coming right behind the missing child and a word from our sponsor. Marcus J. Ain't no half stepping. 